here. Uh, a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, my name is Alfonso, and today I want to talk a bit about MVPs. Because as a unicorn founder, it's been a journey of experimenting and trying new things since we started Nowports. In my opinion, MVPs in today's era shouldn't be expensive, they shouldn't be hard, and they should be a tool that we can build on our own rooms or classrooms by just experimenting and out of curiosity on different topics and subjects. For me, that I started a company six years ago, MVP has not been our initial product, it's been our, our mindset since we started. So, it's a way to build things that last through the entire journey. It's not something we do during a specific stage of the company, and it's not something that we do just to launch. It's also a method that we use to launch new products, to test new markets, new type of customers, etc. The goal is that we can experiment quicker and cheaper while learning faster and iterating so fast that customers can love us and you can finally meet the journey of product market fit. For that, I want to talk a little bit about my journey as a builder. I was born in Monterrey, Mexico, super far from here. Uh, you need to take a flight of more than 18 hours. Uh, and since uh, I remember, I was used to code. Right? I love building things, I love building different software apps, websites, etc. And that's how I started with my first company. One day while I was in college, I learned that supply chains were used to operate on the same way for the last 70 years. So basically everything that you see around yourself was once on a shipping container or they arrived to your house by truck, uh, by airplane, etc. So supply chains are used to run over email. There, at least in Latin America, there was no software, no visibility tool, and any capabilities to make the process easier. So along with my co-founder, we just built during a weekend a small software called Nowports where you could put the number of container that you were moving and we could tell you for the first time where was that container. Okay, we could give you visibility of when that container was arriving, how much it was going to cost, etc. There were no people behind this product, we were just two guys building a small software solution for an unattended market. When we started, we didn't have an idea that Nowports would become a big company, that we would be on different countries, etc. We just expected to attend a specific pain or to provide a solution to a market that needed it. Based on that, after launching, we got a lot of experimentation. We started iterating and we started finding our few, first few customers until we arrived to the right product and to the right software solution that we wanted to provide. Building this small solution helped us to create a big market in the, a big company in emerging markets. Just to give you an idea, there are more than 4,000 shippers just in Mexico that usually need to send more than 600 emails per week to manage their supply chains. That including, including air freight, ocean freight, and truck freight. So Nowports wanted to become that solution of giving them visibility and digitizing a huge part of the process. When we started, we got the opportunity of finding a few heroes or customers that we now call heroes that helped us pave the way uh, through our product market fit. Obviously, we didn't have a strong idea of w how does a uh, Nowports on Series C or on 2024 would look like, but we knew that we wanted to create a small software solution that could save them hours and, and a lot of manual work that they were using. So in this journey, we got the opportunity to join Y Combinator just when we had when we were two persons, one paying customer, but a huge market to attend. So based on that, we decided that we wanted to be the biggest supply chain solution for Latin America. We now operate on nine different countries. We serve a little bit more than 4.5 thousand shippers across all the region, including major economies like Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Chile, etc. And the value or 
the insights that we have gotten along the way is that the only way we could have built Nowports, it's not with a single product that we take two or three years to launch into the market, but it's through constant iteration. And this constant iteration look like small projects that we invest in, going back to the, to the last slide, small projects that we invest in just to find if we are solving our customer one need that, uh, that they couldn't do before, either through a system, uh, by automating a specific task, et cetera. This part of providing them different experimentation at small products helped us to launch new business verticals that we have gotten along the way, uh, like access to financing, automating cargo insurance policies, and providing different software solutions to our customers. In my opinion, the biggest value that we have gotten in Nowports, it's not the capital that we have raised, it's not my brain or my co-founder's brain, and it's not the market where we are in, but it's the ability to move faster and to build things that actually people love and they use on a daily basis. I think that if we talk about the era of AI and uh, 2024, everyone can build different MVPs with a really cheap and simple solution uh, directly from their bedrooms, from the office, etc. Not necessarily with a big team or with a lot of capital raised. And this only enables a new generation of developers and people that can build out things for unattended markets, for those markets that no one looks into, but that they have a big impact on our daily lives. Just as the example that I gave about logistics, that 90% of the things that are around us were one on a shipping container, I think there are other ones, like in the financial services, in the construction, architecture, medical, etc. And the biggest or the easiest way to build this is by seeing the MVP as a continued learning cycle, as a process that never stops, but that actually you start building on top of it. Because the MVP of today, sorry, your finalized product of today should look like your MVP of tomorrow. Right? Because you never know what the market will need. You never know what are they expecting from you or actually which disruption is going to come. Because when we started Nowports, we didn't have an idea that we were going to have generative AI or automated agents on 2024. And the cap the capacity to adapt to these new markets and to iterate faster is what, number one, keeps you alive, but number two, keeps you relevant on a market that is changing all the time. Now, just before uh, wrapping up, I think it's really important to to discuss about the different tools that we have access to today uh, and that we didn't have access to a few years back, right? Uh, when we I don't know who was building software tools on 20, 20, uh, 2010 or 2015, but back then, the only way you could build a software solution was if you had a technical founder or if you knew how to code. And actually, if you knew how to code, but you wanted to create something pretty, you needed out a designer, you needed out a consultancy on, on law, etc., to set up your company, etc. And I think for the first time in history, we can build out things without being the experts, without being the ones that are writing most of the code or designing most of the wireframes that we have just as, as founders. So this takes me a bit to talk about tools. Um, I put down here tools like OpenAI that probably everyone is used to, uh, where you can just ask different advice and, and get um, access to different knowledge networks of how to set up a company in next place, how to code one thing, etc. But then we start getting more specific tools or more specific access to, to other capabilities, such as Cursor, where you can code without coding at all, uh, just by using input metrics um, of text, uh, GitHub Copilot, Visual Studio Code, etc. And now I want to talk to you a little bit about MVPs on this era in outports, now that we are a little bit more than 700 employees across nine different countries, et cetera. Our second biggest business after freight that we launched six, a year, six years ago, it's financing. So basically we provide financing to our customers by using the cargo as collateral. This is an idea that came from an early Nowports employee four years back 
when we didn't have an idea that we wanted to launch this product. It's an idea that we got from uh, an employee that talked with a customer that needed access to financing, and they didn't have a solution with established bank or a traditional fintech. So based on that, we decided to build a new product, but without investing a lot on a huge team of capital, without raising debt, etc. We tried to build the simplest solution which was a Google form where customers could ask for financing and we could give them an answer after 48 hours by doing all the manual work uh, behind their, their form, right? So this type of mindset of iterating fast and providing them different solutions uh, without the friction of investing a lot and using a lot of capital only decreases risk but accelerates uh, your capacity of delivering value to customers without depending nece necessarily on external recourse, uh, res resources or uh, by risking yourself of, of not finding product market fit. And the, the last thing is that I think Building an MVP is not something that you do only on startups. I think every time you want to either run a marathon or apply it in your personal life or actually in the work you're, you're doing without co-founding the company, it's really easy to experiment on new things without exposing um, yourself or building something for, I don't know, one year without launching and not getting any input from the market, right? So the value or the message that I want to leave you with is that experimenting, it, it's been a key part of my journey as a founder, and it's been one of the biggest advantages that we have against traditional competitors on an industry that was dominated by legacy players in Latin America. We had some companies for more than 400 years working on shipping, um, and then you have other carriers uh, such as MERS that have been operating uh, the, the last 100 years in the region, and we thought that the only way we, got, we could operate uh, was by moving faster. Moving faster and trying new things that people uh, couldn't come up with before. So I, I invite you to, to just see MVPs as a quick experimentation that is cheap, that can move faster uh, on any, any topic of your life. And yes, that's basically everything. So thanks so much, uh, and thanks for hosting me.